This is what I'm going to call my binding mixture. Although it's pretty much complete uh, fish food itself, what I've done is I've added stuff to wheat gluten that really grabs onto moisture. So what I have included in this is my clam meal, fish meal, krill meal, shrimp meal. This is already added to it. Something else that's already added to it is a probiotic mixture. People sometimes poo-poo yeasts. They don't know much about yeast. Live yeast spread for aquaculture are direct consumers of ammonia. Super high nutrition and uh, or the cornerstone of a lot of aquaculture probiotic diets. So what you have in here is a couple of species of yeast, a few species of lactobacillus, uh, at least one bacillus species, and all, all bred for aquaculture purposes. And they will not be subjected and killed by heat. What this is, is a vitamin and mineral mix. Uh, fish require huge amounts of vitamin C, which is practically gone within three months of any commercial fish food. Uh, any food that, that you do buy, commercial food, dry, flake, any of that type of stuff, you know, after three months, generally forget about it. And even if it's, you need to refrigerate it. You need to refrigerate it. Another thing that we have is astaxanthin. Astaxanthin, people think it's to make fish red. It's not to make fish red. It serves some serious purposes in nature and... Uh, it's commonly found in nature in uh, algaes and yeasts and the microbes and larger critters such as shrimps that eat those algaes and yeasts and concentrate it. And why a fish needs it is for a couple of reasons. It's their vitamin A depot. It stores it. Vitamin A is stored as astaxanthin. We don't think that it was a little red pigment, but it's a vitamin A precursor. And the fish will draw of it out of its skin as it needs it. A discus, a black water fish, uh, need, needs good eyesight. Marine fish, reef fish. Reef fish are exposed to a lot of, you know, it's only the blue light that uh, penetrates. To the reef. Uh, it's their sunglasses. It's the sunglasses for their eggs, for pelagic spawners in particular. The UV in the sunlight at the surface will kill the eggs if their parents don't have adequate astaxanthin in their system. Uh, soy protein. Uh, soy, uh, soy protein isolate I use that. It, it, you can use it as a total binder, but I kind of use it at the end if I need to uh, soak up a little bit of excess moisture. This is three species of lab-grade algae, the cost of which, say, is prohibitive uh, for inclusion in a fish food. Uh, spirulina is probably your least nutritious. You want to go for chlorella at least, get citridium, but captive bread, bread for its high fat content. We're not using this for its vegetable value. We're using it because they can be selectively bred to produce a lot of oil as opposed to a lot of carbohydrates. And again, about plant matter, you know, the, the, there was some stuff published about discus eating algaes and this and that. They're, they're, they're eating it. They're eating it when there's nothing else to eat. 
I'm only concerned with what they eat in the uh, breeding season and what nourishes them. They can eat all the algae they want. If you weigh the algae or vegetable matter going into a discus, and an hour later, because that's about as long as it's going to last in their guts, an hour later, weigh it coming out of their systems, you'll find out they didn't digest it at all. And being it's high sugar content food, the perfect way to get the parasites in their stomach active in eating is to throw a carbohydrate at them. That's the way a microbiologist would assist them to study them, the parasites. If they're in a cyst, you put it in a sugar starch solution and they explode. So actually it'll make the fish sicker. So you want to avoid carbohydrates. The only value in these algaes are in their highly unsaturated fatty acid content. Now, this is a mixture I told you before, the best thing you can give the fish as food is mollusk. So does clam, mussel, squid. They also get real sticky when they use that boomerang shape, boomerang shape blade I told you about. There's some fish in here, there's some fatty fish, cold water fish. You want cold water fish. You want, you want mackerel, you want smelts, you want cod, you want tuna. Stuff like that. Stuff from cold water, cold water fish, a fatty fish, a lot of oils. And this, this again, is done with the boomerang shaped blender. What I do, this particular mixture, my meat mixture, my fresh meat mixture, I tend to add the Aztec anthem to it as it's spinning around the food processor it's just because you need so little of the Aztec anthem. I, I kind of know by eye after 30 years of doing this what color it should change. Uh, but, oh, by the way, Aztec anthem can be quite dangerous. Vitamin, uh, the rates that the uh, fish foods, commercial fish foods, or the discus farmers use is for quick results. Uh, eye damage, liver damage, vitamin A toxicity, which can be a long-term situation, a hidden situation. The fish drops dead after two years. You don't know why, but you had it for two years. You don't look to fix blame any place. It could have been all the Aztec anthem you've been feeding it. But a fish can't see out of one eye. Again, too much Aztec anthem. Okay. I want to start with the wet part of the mixture. In the end, we're probably going to talk about 50-50, thereabouts, wet to dry mix. Now, what this wet mix consists of, and I do change it uh, as to availability, sometimes as to species of fish, is I've got my clam meat in there, the fresh clam meat, squid, some conch, there's uh, some small oily fish, uh, anchovy, whole, stuff like that. And what I've done is the Aztec xanthin will add a little bit over here. But what I do, being a, as you see, it tends to clump, is what I generally do is I add the bulk of it to the stuff in the blender, to the seafoods in the blender while I'm mixing it. Because after doing this for 30 years, I kind of know what the color should be like. It's a little tough to mix by hand, but by the time I'm done, the Aztec anthem will be in there. Usually I make 100 pounds of this stuff at a time. So, okay. What I'm going to do now is this is probiotic formula. This probiotic formula consists of a couple of species of yeasts, lactobacilli, bacilli, 
and some other neat stuff. And also, the, what's really important, which gets to working soon, in the water, actually, is the uh, enzymes. This stuff sort of like self-digests itself. That's another thing. When it comes to fry foods, and we're going to have a great artificially artificial discus diet come out of this, same plate. Probiotics mature the fish, the larval fish's gut soon, sooner than an aquarist can do it alone. And the fish actually start feeding and utilizing food quicker if you use that. What I'm going to do, get the drying process going. This is clam meal, shrimp meal, fish meal, all sorts of good marine proteins that also have a drying quality to them. They will absorb moisture. So let's start using real nutritious foods to start absorbing moisture. See where we get. I suggest if you're going to do something like this, is that you do it in a small in small lots until you get the hang of it. In other words, get all your ingredients, but only make a few ounces at a time in case you have to trash it. Okay. Another thing we're going to add, vitamins. Uh, for the sake of uh, marine fish, a little bit heavy on the lysine, which is a protein, it's not a vitamin per se. But this would be considered a vitamin, mineral, amino acid type mixture. Heavy on the vitamin C. You want to have at least, at least a gram or two or three in a kilo of food. There's, again, there's a little bit of a drying quality to that mixture. The algaes are oily. So these algaes are lab raised. Lab raised for their oil content, their fatty acid content. They're not genetically modified, they're environmentally modified to produce excess and excessive amounts of fatty acids as opposed to carbohydrates. So the mixture is tightening up to a good degree at this point. I feel it's starting to get a bit tacky. I could add soy protein isolate if I wish. Well, why don't I show you how I can do that? I'll take a little bit of it and bind it with soy protein isolate, just so you can see how it works compared to my favorite homemade binder over there. As you can see, it's starting to thicken sticking to the to the spatula it needs a little more probably to complete it thing is it's going to absorb moisture for 10 or 20 minutes so you probably are not going to see the end of this part of the story but as you can see it's and you test it in a glass of water or in your aquarium as you're going along. I'd have to wait, like I said, about 10 minutes to see how it will ultimately bind up. But it's not going to bind up anywhere near what I'm going to show you next. Here's the binder I explained before. 
Now what I've done is I've used the concept of protein sparing. In other words, I've added no ingredient, unless it's 100% necessary, that is diminishing the protein value and the total nutritional value of the end product. This will need a bit of time for the binder to absorb all this great stuff. I don't see any need to add further protein, soy protein isolate for this blend as there's no uh, obvious moisture collecting on the surface or anything like that. Okay, now the well, we're going to let this dry. Now, as this is drying, let me show you some neat things for you. Guys artificially raising discus. Here's your white dish or your white sheet of plastic, whatever you use. There you go. The baby discus will just eat it. And it's far superior to just egg yolk. If you're in love with egg yolk, just put the egg yolk in there and bind it up. Once this is dry, it'll sit there all day long. And there is nothing wrong with letting baby discus, larval discus, eat eight-hour-old food. Nothing at all. As a matter of fact, because of the probiotics, it's actually going to become more nutritious as time goes on. So, as you can see, I use my preferred binder. About 15 minutes has passed now. We have something that will stick to the glass. Or can be fed in any manner you wish. Just as an aside, what I did with the soy protein isolate, to me, is not as good. It's pretty firm. You might want to try it. Might be perfectly fine for other types of fish. For different different types of fish may prefer that is what I meant. Now, here's a clever thing you can do. I have a few of these clam shells and scallop shells that are drilled and have a hole in them and you attach a thread to them. And you can put any kind of amount of this stuff in it. You can freeze these. You can even put different ingredients in them. You can put pellets in there. You can put bits of plaster for parrotfish. Many, many things you can do. You can smear this mixture on coral or on a piece of rock. So you butterf the butterfly fish you just got who's pecking it pieces of dead coral looking for food, well find food and you can get stuff feeding on it. As far as freshwater stuff goes, your plecos, I mean they'll eat it, eat it out of a clam shell or pretty much anything you want and for those of you who want to actually feed their fish wood, you can take some hardwood chunks or scraps. That happens to be aspen. And you can make yourself wood pellets. Like I said, this will harden up. This will harden up. You can do this, you can do that. 
and I put it in a plastic bag, I flatten it out. Okay, when all is said and done, I take the production of food. Put it in a baggie. What I do is I do it as thin as I do it as thin as reasonably possible so it will thaw out quickly. Now remember I prepared this about a half an hour ago at this point and what you do is you see the consistency like I said you could have a glass of water right next to here and what you do is you can add more binder or more liquid material or just water until it really becomes a paste that doesn't fall apart easily in the water and properly made it can sit all day on the inside glass or in a clamshell or on a an expensive china plate if you wish put it in the aquarium and they will eat it the one very important thing is get your fish and paste food early on much easier to worm a fish apply medications no reason to put medicines for intestinal parasites in the water. Put it right in the food 